It's our last day in Ocean Grove, so we start off by having breakfast at a local cafe in Ocean Grove, and then head off to Point Lonsdale, have a look at the town and sites, and also have a look at the infamous rip, the opening of Port Phillip Bay to the ocean. Join me for part two of our weekend away to Ocean Grove. It was our last day at Ocean Grove, so we checked out of our Airbnb and made our way to the main street and had breakfast in the Driftwood Cafe. It's quite a nice hearty breakfast, I must admit. Really nice vibe in the cafe. I would recommend this to uh, anyone that wanted to have a nice breakfast or lunch if they're in Ocean Grove. After breakfast, we drove to Point Lonsdale. Point Lonsdale is about 10 kilometres east of Ocean Grove and a short 10 minute drive. The scene that you're seeing here is the main beach in Point Lonsdale. Opposite this beach is uh, a whole uh, range of shops and the main town itself. It is quite a rough beach. I wouldn't uh, recommend swimming here um, as it um, faces the rip. The rip is a very, very rough stretch of waters. I'm standing in Point Nepean, overlooking the rip and looking out into the ocean into Bass Strait. Port Phillip Bay is a huge body of water and its only access to the ocean is via the rip. The rip is the body of water between uh, the Ballerine Peninsula, where I'm standing, and the land over the other side which is the Mornington Peninsula. As you can see, there's a big ship about to cross into Port Phillip Bay through the rip, and generally a pilot uh, guides the big ships through the, the very narrow channel. It's a very infamous and rough stretch of water. Point One Star Lighthouse. So this is Point Longstale Beach, quite a rough beach, rocky, and there's no way I'd swim here, very, very strong currents. Also, incidentally, not a speck of foam anywhere to be seen. It must be all the organic material from the Bowen River that's been uh, going out into the Bye. This lighthouse has been operating since 1863. That's a very long time. A 
little bit past the lighthouse is Point Lonsdale Battery. The battery was built at the outbreak of World War I in around about 1914 and served as a really good um, lookout point, spotting enemy ships seeking to uh, cross the rip and into Bass Strait and into the port of Melbourne. I don't think any action was seen, but there were certainly a number of powerful searchlights and uh, artillery pieces mounted here, both for World War I and then again for World War II. short five minute and five kilometer drive from Point Lonsdale found us in Queenscliff. So I am standing on the edge of Queenscliff Marina, just in Queenscliff, the port of Queenscliff. It's a fantastic sunny day. I haven't got any sunscreen on so I hope I don't get burnt. Let's have a look around the marina shall we? So these are pilot boats. These are the boats that uh, meet the very big container ships and a pilot jumps on one of those container ships and guides it through the rip and through Port Phillip Bay which apparently is quite difficult and challenging to navigate from the rip to the Port of Melbourne. It's quite a shallow bay and there's specific shipping channels that need to be followed otherwise the ships run the risk of running aground. I really liked Queen's Cliff Harbour. It had a really nice vibe about it. All the shops and cafes and uh, eateries and the marina. But I think the highlight for me was the Queen's Cliff Harbour observation tower. Entry to the tower is free. You can ride up the lift or walk up the stairs if you desire. The tower is around about 42 metres high and it offers outstanding 360 degree views of the surrounding area. The views that you get include Queenscliff, Port Phillip Bay and the Heads and the famous Rip and all the way to the um, Mornington Peninsula and up the Ballerine Peninsula. You also get an outstanding view of the newly constructed Sea Road Ferry that transports cars and people 
from Queenscliff to Sorrento on the Mornington Peninsula. As you can see, there's cars um, getting off the ferry, and shortly, cars will be getting on the ferry to make the, uh, the journey. It costs around $170 to transport a normal car and two adults on the ferry. The journey takes about oh, around 40 to 45 minutes, but the alternative would be a 210-kilometre drive and roughly three hours, depending on the time of day, to uh, go via road. What you're seeing now is the Queenscliff Marina, Mud Island, and Port Phillip Bay. In the distance, very hard to see, is the skyline of the city of Melbourne. We had a fantastic weekend away. It was a reasonably short trip from Melbourne, around about 100 kilometres or an hour and a half. We saw the Rip, Ocean Grove, Barwon Heads, Point Lonsdale, and lastly Queenscliff. I'd recommend it either as a day trip or a weekend away. I do hope you've liked this video. If so, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And until our next adventure, bye.